Here I am, hamming it up. So this was Cinemaphobia, a film I shot in the summer of 2001. I edited it over the fall, and, um, well, it wasn't a school project. Um, it was done outside of class. Um, this is me going through my experimental phase with lots of cross dissolves and crazy mirror shots and really acting, going over the top with it. Um, I'm doing the commentary in 2011. I don't know why it took me so long to do a commentary for this movie. I, I guess it just spoke for itself, so I never really felt it was necessary. The original title was Lens of Dementia. What an awful title. Um, Cinemaphobia was much better. Um, this is also the 15-minute version of the movie, which is the longer version. Um... The, the other version you'll see on this DVD is 10 minutes, and that's actually the one I prefer. But I'm doing the longer version, so I have more time to talk. And I'm not exactly fresh off this movie. Like I said, it was 10 years ago. Um, so this isn't going to be my best commentary. Um, and I'm also not... I didn't really plan it much. Uh, I haven't even watched this movie in a while, but uh, it's bringing back some memories. Um, this was always fun to shoot like a mini-movie inside of a movie. Uh, you know, I have lots of different ideas, and not all my ideas can be expanded into a full movie. So, you know, you take a lot of those short ideas and you put it into, you know, into another movie. So I guess I'm supposed to be like an action horror star. And I don't know what's the deal with the red headband. I mean, I guess I'm supposed to be like Rambo or something. Um, this was the first movie that I shot non-linear, or the first movie I edited non-linear, like on a computer, you know, editing software. Um, and uh, that's one of the reasons I it took me so long to edit, because I was still learning how to do it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to do cross dissolves really bad. I wanted to do things that I couldn't do when I was editing on two VCRs. So... I had to wait a little longer for this movie to get done, you know, in the editing, but when I did, it was worth it. Um, this is Phil here. He was really cool. Yeah, Phil was a nice guy. Um, he wasn't really into acting, but, uh, you know, I, I thought it would be cool to have him in the movie for this one scene where he's supposed to be, like, an obsessed fan. Um, I don't know why I chose him. I guess because he, uh, you know, he has a lot of piercings, and he kind of looks like a horror movie kind of guy, and, um... He comes to me with his bloody skull <laughs> for me to sign, um, you know, which is funny. The reason I'm acting in this movie is because I couldn't get anybody else. I didn't want to be the star. It was actually more difficult for me to be on camera and actually direct it at the same time because I couldn't, you know, see how the shots were coming out, you know, so I always had to... You know, like right here, we had uh, the camera on a tripod that was tied to the, the hood of the car, and it fell off. Uh, it worked for a little while. You can go up to about like 25, maybe 30 miles per hour. And uh, once I turned around at the end of the road, then uh, the ropes came loose and the, the camera fell. It still worked, but uh, it broke the infrared night vision, you know, light on the camera. Um, other than that, it still worked. Um... This was also one of the first movies that I shot on uh, digital video. Um, so this this movie actor comes home. He's got a, a message on his answering machine. I, I felt he should have had more than just one message. But, uh, um, we came up with the name of the production company that was calling them as Twisted Pictures. Coincidentally, the next year... Um, there was a real Twisted Pictures that actually came out, um, which I think came out in 2002. Um, so that was like a year later, but you know, that shit always happens. You come up with a name, you think it's original and then you find out somebody else comes up with the same exact thing. Um, so I was doing all kinds of neat form cuts here. Like this part here, I think I put like plastic wrap over the, the LCD screen on the camera and like, you know, wrote on it with marker just so I could know where all those different objects were. So he's eating uh, Ilio's pizza, <laughs> that classic, uh, you know, cardboard <laughs> pizza. Um, 
So, I mean, the, the guy's supposed to be like a, a rich movie star, and it doesn't really come off that way. But, you know, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, like, you can see here how, like, if you notice in the background and stuff, like right about here, see, like, the grandfather clock on the TV, the wine, the candle. I would just put all these objects around to just try and, like, show that he's, like, living in, like, you know, a mansion or something. Um by the way, the movie on the TV is uh, The Rotten Corpse of Snicks. You know, it's a movie I made, but uh, it's supposed to be one of his movies. He switches the channel to something else because he doesn't want to see his own movies. I figured, well, what could it be? How about golf? So, you know, I think of, like, famous movie actors like Bill Murray. Like, what do they like to do on, this, on their spare time? Well, they like to play golf, so maybe that's what his side hobby is. Um, had to come up with something. Um, so anyway, like, I, I was kind of struggling with the idea, is this like a, a rich, famous movie actor, or is he like kind of down and out, you know? Um, it's not really, you know, that clear, um, but uh, judging from what I had, uh, it seemed like I should have just made him like a down and out kind of guy, but instead he's kind of like, he's like super famous, but he's like tired of it. Like, you see right there, I put like, that that lamp and all these like tasteless things I put around was just kind of like, you know, different props just to show who he is. Uh, I felt like if we would have showed the front yard, he should have had a pink flamingo in the in the front yard. You know, just real tasteless stuff. This scene here was like a dream. Being able to edit this and use cross dissolves and all this kind of things. A lot of it's stock footage from older movies I made. You'll see some of that coming up coming up pretty soon. Um, this was like a castle I found like when I was on a road trip. Um, so right here, this is like a plexiglass box that I made and it was just like reflecting everything. I was spinning it and, uh, doing all those form cuts with like eyeballs and you know it was just I was just being experimental um so anyway the idea that came to me the the reason I came up with the oh wait <laughs> my mom that that was my mom as the you know <laughs> I cut off you know her head um if you've seen the movie American movie when he gets his mom to act for him it it, it just makes me laugh because it's so true that that's what I used to have to do you can't get anybody else nobody's around then Good old Ma, or anybody anybody you got. The idea for Cinemaphobia came when uh, I was acting in somebody else's film, and there was a scene where I was lying down in a bed, and he was setting up, and he had the camera above me on a tripod, and I guess I, like, fell asleep, and then I, I woke up to just this camera staring down at me, and I never forgot that. I always thought it was creepy. Some people said, what's that, Mickey Mouse? Because, <laughs> like, the ears, but no, it's just the... It's a Super 8 camera. Um, I put the, the top part is, is fake. I just made that with like rolls of tape and covered it in black electrical tape. I did all these cool like, uh, I like cut the, the, I cut pieces of cardboard out with that light you see in the background to make all those different light shapes. I'm trying to make like a German expressionist kind of feel like Cabinet of Dr. Caligari or Nosferatu. Um, very uh, silent comedy sort of, you know, feel to it. Um, I really thought about the backgrounds carefully. If you look back there, that shelf, like all those different little art sculptures and stuff were things I made. Um, I hate this doorknob shot. It just doesn't seem to match. And then that cut there, I hate that too. But this is pretty cool, the, the POV shot of the camera. And you see the eyes, you know. Yeah, I was being artsy, but, you know, it's cool. So I, I guess I'm hiding out in a shower now. And I guess he hides there all the way till the morning. So uh, the theme of this movie really is just side effects of success. Like, I really wanted it to be like this actor is successful and he's in high demand. But he's, you know, with success comes a lot of attention. So it's kind of just the price you pay. And he's kind of like... You know, he's, he's kind of tired of all the attention. 
And there are some times when I feel that way, like 10 years later, but I, but I never felt that way at the time. It was just something that, because this, this was before I was successful or anything. Like, I wasn't like, I didn't have like a legion of fans. Um, and it's a great thing to have. But yeah, like sometimes you feel like you're always being like watched some, somehow in some form. You're like always on somebody's TV somewhere, somebody's like screen. This scene here is uh, inspired by Meshes in the Afternoon, like a, a short 1940s film. Uh, my friend Kevin Finn was operating the camera during this scene, so he kind of knew what I was going for. And this part where it walks down the steps, everybody asked me how that was done, but it was pretty simple. It was just somebody was on top of the, the rail and they were like just walking the tripod down. You know, that was pretty much it. This part's really cool because he's like, you know, it's just a gag I had where he has all these different locks on the door and then it gets stuck in the carpet. That was actually a, a recurring gag in a lot of my movies. You actually see something like that in the Angry Nerd Fry the 13th episode. Then we had strings moving the, the camera around. Sometimes you see the strings, sometimes you don't. Those POV shots work pretty good. It was just like a like a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll or something. Now, uh, this part coming up, I obviously do not light my real living room on fire, but we got a fake, uh, we got like a, a carpet outside and I actually burned a carpet outside. And I also, um, like, there's like one shot you see coming up where it's like a, I made a fake wall with some wood trim and uh, an electrical outlet fog machine you see all that smoke that's a fog machine and then i had a red floodlight which you see in like in this shot you can see some of the red floodlight we had somebody waving that around so it looked like the place was on fire there's a the shot i was talking about with the you know that's outside um with the electrical outlet uh and then there's the golf clubs again so he's gonna destroy the thing he hates with the thing he loves And uh, I really didn't want to damage the camera because it's, you know, it's a vintage Super 8 camera. So it, it was in the fire for a few seconds. And I pulled it out. It got a little bit of burns on it. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm going to shoot Super 8 ever again. But, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a vintage camera. And uh, I felt it was a, you know, a little bit of just like a, a sacrifice for the movie. It just needed to be done. Um, this part coming up is like... Like th this was one of the hardest things to, to shoot with the fire engine coming up because uh, I had this friend who had a fire engine and um, he always wanted me to, to use it in a movie. Like he, you know, oh, you see the, the fog machine on the right through the window. Nobody ever really noticed that. But people were impressed by the fire engine. Um, see, he, he owned his own fire engine and um, he always wanted um, to use it in a movie um, or, you know, he offered it to me and I said, yeah, that'd be cool. And I come over and then it turns out, well, he's not like legally allowed to drive it. And I guess he was in an argument with his mom about it. And uh, his dad was there also for some reason and like was really upset. And like there was a lot of yelling going on in the house. His mom actually yelled at me and I didn't even know what was going on. I just got caught in the middle of like this domestic argument. Um, so and he he was like I, I said you don't got to do it don't worry I'll just I'll just go home and, and he, he's like no no I'm gonna do this because he he was so mad he couldn't drive his own fire engine and then they were saying they're gonna call the cops and we had to pretty much shoot the scene and get out of there um, and as you can see you know we shot this in just one take it's just one wide shot we didn't get close ups I kind of like it because it, it kind of takes an observatory stance like a you're watching it as like a neighbor almost. Also, I got a comment about the water coming out of the hose. Uh, the water was not actually functional. Um, we, ha we had to hook it up to a garden hose, and that's why it comes out in short spurts. So basically, nothing happened. The fire engine scene just wasn't worth it. It was too much trouble. Um, I didn't know, you know what I was getting involved in. It was just like there was arguing, and it was just a, it was a freaking mess. Um, so this is the last scene. I felt like the movie could have ended after the fire because that's how all the classic universal horror movies end. You know, the, the monster burns in the flames. But we had this last part here. And um, it was tough to, to get somebody to shoot this because I always had to get whoever was available. And I couldn't see, but this, this shot came out like crap. Uh, I didn't know that the shutter speed was like that. And it was so blurry. 
and uh, you know this part here was a fake camera th that uh, the lens was actually like a small roll of duct tape. My life so uh, that cinemaphobia, I actually movie. always wanted to do a sequel, uh, Cinemaphobia Reloaded, kind of a spoof because uh, Reloaded is a cliche title, but it also means like the camera is reloaded, and uh, it actually would uh, the the camera in the sequel it kind of fleshes out the the character of the camera a little more like a paparazzi that's following me around so the, the character actually has the, the camera actually has a lot more like sort of like personality and there's a lot of humor in the sequel but i never got a chance to make it yet um i'd like to tell you all about it but uh the film's over now so uh thank you for listening and bye